uh, but but it, it's left a really bad taste in the mouths of the vast majority of an Amer- the American public. And this is not a left-right issue. Uh, you know, you have even figures like Rick Santorum denouncing it. It is it is it has to do with the basic issue of civil liberties, which cuts across the political spectrum. So at least on the ground, I think you know the vast majority of Americans seem to be behind us. Whether the courts, uh, you know, will rule on behalf of the citizens or rule finally on behalf of the corporations, we'll have to find out. Well, I was about to raise the left-right issue. Issues like the TSA, warrantless wiretaps, uh, secret arrest, torture. This is something unifying America. And it, it's really becoming clear that it's a tag team with the Republicans and Democrats. And that for all intents and purposes, it's a corrupt political corporate ruling class that is authoritarian and that is dangerous and that is growing like a cancer. Well, that's my take. <laughs> well, let's get your take on the world. Talk about your latest book in, in just five, six minutes we have left on the other side with Chris Hedges, Pulitzer Prize winning American journalist, author and war correspondent, former uh, head of the New York Times uh, Bureau in the Middle East. We'll be right back with our guest straight ahead and we'll give you his website as well. St stay with us. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. We're here live. I come back live Sundays, 4 to 6 p.m. We also have InfoWars Nightly News at InfoWarsNews.com that we've been beta testing the last five months for television that PrisonPlanet.tv viewers can watch. We have a 15-day free trial subscription running right there. And then, of course, those of you that support the site, you're basically paying for it for everybody else, which is great. We then put it on YouTube and everywhere else a few days later, and it gets millions of views every week, and it's only five months and we, uh, in existence. We're putting a lot of time and energy, obviously, into this, more energy than we do even in the radio show. So if you're not a viewer of it, uh, now is the time to support the alternative, true, independent media. Now, going back to Chris Hedges, the, the best website to read his amazing essays is truthdig.com forward slash Chris Hedges. That's truthdig.com forward slash Chris Hedges. Uh, also, uh, I was asking which book he thinks is the most important right now, and it's actually not his group of essays from last year, The World as We Know It. It's a death of the liberal class. And I wanted in the, in the six, seven minutes we have left with him to kind of give him the floor to talk about whatever he thinks is most important and where he sees this uh, society uh, going right now. Chris? Well, I think that the the mistake is that the liberal class is somehow meant to be the political left. The liberal class is a kind of safety valve uh, that makes incremental and piecemeal reform possible. Uh, that's what you saw with Roosevelt on the New Deal. Um, and, uh, and what's happened is that essentially – uh, traditional liberal politicians, as well as the Democratic Party, have become completely hostage to corporate power. So you get the rise of self-identified liberals like Bill Clinton, who pushed through NAFTA, which is the greatest betrayal of working men and women in this country since the Taft-Harley Act, who uh, deregulate uh, uh, the FCC uh, so that Rupert Murdoch and, and Clear Channel can buy up thousands of stations, who uh, ripped down the firewalls between commercial and investment banks, known as the Glass-Steagall Act. All of this is done under Clinton, including, of course, the destruction of welfare. And so these are, you know, a, a kind of betrayal of core liberal values um, done by the liberal establishment for corporate money. And Clinton knew that if he did corporate bidding, he would get that money. So that by the 1990s, the Democratic Party, in terms of corporate dollars, has fundraising parity with the Republicans, and by the time Barack Obama runs for president in 2004, he gets more. Um, and that is the issue, that, that the popular movements, the populist movements that expressed uh, the uh, sentiments from the base, uh, whether those were old labor unions or the Wobblies or an independent press, or um, they were pretty much destroyed in the Red Scare. Um, and you just mentioned the attacks against Ron Paul in the name of sort of being soft on terrorism, or I think you even said that he was accused of being, uh, you know, a terrorist himself. I mean, that's what they would have done 50 years ago to discredit him. They would have, they would have said he's soft on communism. Uh, it, it's exactly the same kind of iconography, the same kind of language that's used by the power elite to discredit uh, legitimate criticism and legitimate dissent. 
Uh, and I think that that's what's happened. The anger over the liberal class is not misplaced. Um, it, it, people have been betrayed uh, by these figures like Obama, like Clinton, like Pelosi, like Carl Levin, like the leadership of the Democratic Party that speaks in that traditional feel-your-pain language uh, and yet carries out policies that are as uh, craven to corporate interests as those that are carried out by the Republican Party. Well, looking at these big corporate interests, I mean, we see people like the head of MF Global making 40 to 1 bets with other people's money. Uh, Corzine gets caught lying in Congress. Uh, you know, the, the, the head of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange says, no, we were there. He knew. Of course he gave the order to take the private accounts. And no one gets in trouble. I mean, there's a new level of, of, of just getting away with everything. And when you learn that this corporate insider crony capitalist class is running things and, 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 and are so hubris filled, or maybe it's not hubrism, maybe they are godlike now because of corruption and, and, and because of the public's weakness or whatever, that they can make 40 to 1 bets. I mean, that shows that these people are insane. Well, look at Goldman Sachs. They're bailed out with taxpayer money, and then they're given virtually interest-free loans uh, to, to gamble. I mean, you just sort of can't lose. I don't know what to call it. It's not capitalism. Uh, and, and there's been no uh, punishment, uh, except for Bernie Madoff, and that's because he stole from rich people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, nobody gets punished. I mean, these people are all back doing what they were doing before, except now they're doing it with our money. And at a higher level, you're right, derivatives are... What about people like Cass Sunstein openly putting out papers saying, we'll arrest people we disagree with, but first... We'll just have takedown orders of their sites on the web, and then we see that in SOPA. I mean, the, you know, the thing is, they're so honest about their authoritarianism, and then the, we get criticized for, for being gloom and doomers. Yeah, well, they are rather amazingly honest about it because they think they're untouchable. Uh, and you see that with the kinds of statements made by figures like Lloyd Blankfein from Goldman Sachs. God's uh, work. They, they, own, they own the process. They know they own the process, uh, and, um, and, and they feel that there is no, and they're right, internally, there is no power that can touch them, either from the judicial branch or the legislative branch. Uh, and, and that's why I think they see the rise of the Occupy movements and other grassroots movements as such a threat, because that anger... Uh, and, and, and that outrage is, is being expressed outside the system. And so they're looking for all the tools they can, whether it's SOPA or the NDAA or anything else, to crush it. Well, you're right. And, I mean, in closing, at first they tried to co-opt it and, and when we saw all these big bank heads endorse it and Obama endorse it. But as soon as they couldn't co-opt it, we now learn there was simultaneous uh, homeland security coordination, right. sweeping them off the streets, violating basic Bill of Rights like Tiananmen Square or something. Uh, I mean, it's really scary. And and I think what's going to bring these guys down, I want your take on this in closing, Chris, we appreciate your time, is their own hubris, that they they think that they can get away with anything and that they're going to start a war with the wrong group or or or, or engage in too many Ponzi bets. I, I mean, take 888. We now know from uh, D.C. insiders that came out in New Yorker magazine that Cheney, basically with NATO, tried to test Russia and see if they could push into South Ossetia and Abkhazia. And the Russians rolled in missiles. The, the, their chairman of their Joint Chiefs of Staff, it was on European TV, but not here, because we're kept in the dark, and said, well, okay, we're going to use nuclear weapons on the NATO forces landing in southern Georgia. And the United States and NATO blinked and pulled back. But it shows... That if we're being run by a bunch of craven old men with bionic hearts uh, who are so so unstable that they would mess with Russia just to see what would happen, I mean, the, the, I think we're all in, in just incredible danger of cataclysms because of these people. Yeah, I think it's a corrupt and pretty rotten elite, which is probably more fragile than we suspect. I think you're right to point out the closure of the 18. Encampments all done uh, simultaneously and coordinated because that exposed what they have to offer, which is essentially force. Uh, instead of responding to the legitimate demands that push people into those encampments, they try to physically erase them. Uh, and uh, 
instead of addressing the foreclosures and bank repossessions, the massive unemployment, the staggering student debt, um, they think they can wipe these encampments and, and the problem will go away. And I think that's a window into how calcified and out of touch they are. Yeah, and instead, it's probably going to cause a violent revolution, which, 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 as you know, usually doesn't go too well in history. And I, I want to try to avoid. Is there any way, in your view, to navigate out of this? Well, you know, I've spent a lot of time with the Occupy movement because, as a somebody who spent twenty years as a war correspondent, I know the poison of violence. I know what it does. Uh, you know, even when it's used in a ostensibly just cause, um, I, I think that. Um, We've, we have to push as hard as we can. I think the state will push back. They clearly already are pushing back. Um, but when legitimate forms of dissent are crushed, uh, you're right. You, you know that you inevitably get a violent response. I hope we don't get there. And uh, I was arrested in front of Goldman Sachs as part of an Occupy demonstration because I think civil disobedience is, is at this point, the only weapon um, that perhaps can thwart um, this slide into what the political philosopher Sheldon Woolen calls our system of inverted totalitarianism. Wow. Well, thank you, Chris, for your time. And uh, people can uh, find the latest book. Uh, well, well, the one you're saying is most important right now, Death of Liberal Class 2010, also the world uh, as uh, it is. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, he certainly got a lot of courage. He is suing uh, Obama for NDAA. And Again, the system always tries to make it either or, and it's in that nuance that people get confused. The system knew that there were all these people disenfranchised. In fact, what was it, 15 suicides or something in the last three days in Morocco? People setting themselves on fire because there's millions of people who can't get jobs? These aren't lazy people setting themselves on fire in Morocco. Uh, I was reading where the Greeks are, are, are putting their kids out on the streets because they can't feed them. And, t and, 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 and thousands of Greek islands, they have thousands of islands, are being handed over, some of them worth billions apiece, to private brokerage firm heads for debt that Greece signed on to. Cause, cause, because the fraudsters sold them derivatives. Now, there's the, the latest. It's, 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 they're kind of doling them out as they happen. That's Moroccan dies after setting himself on fire. I, I guess that's the latest who died. So... All of this is happening, but then you'll hear me criticizing Occupy Wall Street. No, no, no. The system knows that there's people. They've got computerized actuaries. They know there's already demonstrations forming everywhere. I mean, we could predict the Tea Party you know, years before it happened. Uh, Gerald Salente could. I mean, you could see these trends. Well, they've got computers that do it off of what people are actually writing and saying and doing. These computers thin slice giant sections of data and you know come up with incredibly accurate projections. And so they just put out an announcement. Everybody who's mad at Wall Street corruption and bailouts show up here. So you get liberals, conservatives, libertarians, anarchists. They're all down there. And then in comes Soros and the White House controlled people. And they try to go, yes, the answer is raise taxes on the middle class. And Warren Buffett comes out and endorses it and says, that's right. Do what they say. Because he's written the tax laws where he's exempt. So is Mitt Romney. Again, you're taught it's either rich guys or poor people. No, no, no. Normal middle class folks worth a million bucks, five million, 300,000, whatever it is, that whole strata, that's who actually gets their hair cut, buys clothes, goes to a golf course, uh, puts their kid in college, uh, you know, buys electronics, goes to your restaurant. That's the bigger the middle class, the more prosperous because people in the working class can then get into that class and it swells.